Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to link a gameplay ability to a UI action bar in Unreal Engine 5 using the powerful gameplay ability system, or GAS for short. So for example, I have this top-down character that I imported using the top-down sample project that Unreal has for us. And when I click on this, it'll cast my heal spell that we created in the last video, and you'll see my health increase from 100 to 200. But in this case, we're not gonna be going over UI stuff. This is just a simple demo that I created, but our main focus for today is creating this UI that we can click and use for anything that's kind of like top-down, MOBAs, even stuff like Smite or World of Warcraft would probably use this because um, yeah, it's just a simple action bar that we click on to use our own skill. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna assume you've seen at least one or two of my previous ones and you already have gameplay abilities enabled like so, and you've already created a spell that's ready to be used. So in this case, I have this GA underscore heal test, which is that heal icon we just created yesterday or in the last video. So now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna head over to my content browser and go over to user interface, create a widget blueprint and select user widget. And I'm gonna call this WPP underscore skill, uh, skill bar. And now when I double click to open this up, I'm gonna just add a couple things. One is gonna be a canvas panel. One's gonna be a button that we can actually click on to use the spell. And one is gonna be an image to represent the icon of our ability, like so. And when I click button, I'm just gonna make sure is variable is checked and I'll call this um, skill button. And then for the image, I'll call this ability image, like so, make sure it's variable is checked. And I'm gonna expand the horizontal and vertical to the max. And then for the button, I'm just gonna size it to 100 by 100 just so it's a perfect square. And I won't focus too much on how it looks, uh, just want it to be a solid button. And I'm gonna anchor it to the center, middle, zero out the position X and Y. And for the alignment, I'll do 0.5 on the X, so it's perfectly aligned in the middle. And I'll do something like one and a half on the Y, just so it moves up a bit. And we have a little bit of a space. And we have some space from the bottom. I don't want it to be directly on the very bottom. And now I'll just head over to my BP thought top down character. And I have a lot of stuff because I've been testing out on it, but let me just show you what you need. So here's what I would recommend. All you need is you make sure that your ability system component is on your character as a component. And then you want to give the ability we're going to be testing. So in this case, it's the GA test. And then we're going to create that WBP skill bar widget. And we're just going to add it to the viewport. And I'm just going to turn on show mouse cursor is set to true. And the target will be player controller. Just so when I hit play, my mouse is still showing and I can click on it. And currently when I click on it, it doesn't do anything. And let's go ahead and set that up first. So I'll hit stop and go back to WBP skill bar. And now when I go to the graph, this part is actually very easy. When I click skill button and scroll down to the events, I can do an on clicked event over here. And I'm just gonna right click in my event graph and uncheck content sensitive, context sensitive, and look for a try activate abilities by tag. And as you can see under from my GA underscore heal test, when I go to class defaults, we have an ability tag called ability.1 that we created for the spell. So all I'm gonna do is go over to my skill bar and right click this gameplay tag container and promote it to a variable. And I'll leave the name as is called gameplay tag container. And when I click on this and hit compile, I'll be able to edit the tag on this and I'll be able to add that ability.1. And that's exactly what we need to reference. And now from the target, I can just do get ability system component like so. And then I just wanna get the owning player pawn. So let me just clean this up a little bit like so. And this looks good to me. So now this is pretty much all we need to do. So basically when we click on this button specifically, if we have this tag in our character called ability.1, then it's gonna get the owning player pawn that has this ability system component and matches this tag. And we will actually just try using it. So if I go over to my third person map right now, and just click on it, it's already gonna use that heal like so. And it's super easy and just like that. And in my case, I'm just gonna reconnect that UI so we can see it working. Um, you won't have this, but in a separate tutorial, I will be making a UI tutorial to show health, stamina, and basically everything. And that will come with the attribute system as well. So you'll see that when I go ahead and click play and heal, you'll see my HP goes up by 100. And yeah, I can click it again and so on. So now let's actually see how to assign an icon to this. And this is actually one of the easiest parts and one of my favorite things about our gameplay ability system when working with UI. I've always struggled with UI stuff, making things look pretty. But in this case, all we need to do is go over to our gameplay ability and add a variable and I'll, I'll just call this icon. And now I'll just change this to a texture 2D and make it an object reference and click on this eyeball to make it instance editable. Or you can hit the check mark over here on the right in the details. And also I just wanna expose it to spawn or expose on spawn and hit compile and save. And now I'll go back to my WPP skill bar and in my event 
free construct, what I want to do from here is just get a validated get to make sure that there is an icon available. So I'm going to drag ability image, which is referencing this ability image that we created here. And from here, I just want to set the brush from texture. And from here, I just want to set the brush from texture like so. And from here, I want to set the brush. What? And from here, I just want to set the brush from texture, which is going to be an image like so. And from my pre-construct, all I need to do is get that icon in my gameplay ability. So from the variables, I'm going to add another gameplay ability and I'm going to call this GA underscore heal test. And I'm going to make this a class reference to that GA underscore heal test, just so we can get all the objects that we created in our GA heal test over here. So I can grab this icon variable. So from here, I'm going to drag this out and do a get GA heal test or get my heal. And then I'm going to right click and convert this to a validated get. And from the bottom here, I can actually just drag this out and get class defaults. And you're going to see from here, I, my icon's already showing. So let me show you an example. So we, it's, it's called icon because we named it icon. But if you were to call this like the image I want to use, and I'll hit compile, it'll update over here, the image I want to use, right? So it doesn't have to be, it's not 100% formal specifically looking for an icon. It's just showing the variable that I selected. And this circle over here is what matters, which is referencing a texture 2D object reference, which is exactly what we set it over here. So from here, basically, if it's valid, I'm just going to set the visibility of the ability image. So I'm going to drag this and look for set visibility, and it'll be visible if it's valid. And I'll set the brush texture to this texture or to this, this image right here from our class that we set in there to this texture for our ability image. If it's not valid, then I'm just going to make this, um, I'll just hide this. So now when I hit play, it's going to show this blank icon because we actually didn't set an icon in our GA underscore heel test. So when I go back to GA underscore heel test, I'm going to select this variable and select the icon I want to use. And in this case, I'm just going to select that gemstone icon that we can import using this craft resource icons pack, which is free from Rexard and it's available on the marketplace. So if you're looking for some test icons, you can just go ahead and use these. These are for crafting resources, so it may look a little odd, but yeah, just for tutorial purposes, this, this works and serves our purpose. And now I'll select this get validated, this get validated for our GA heal test and under default value for GA heal test, I'm just gonna select that gameplay ability like so and hit compile. And now when I go over to my third person map, I actually, at first I wanna make sure that and now when I go over to my third person map and hit play, and now you'll see that my skill bar is showing the icon. And I can pretty much just do the same method to add up to four abilities or however many abilities you want. And yeah, this looks pretty good to me. Thanks for watching Code Throw. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.